Well, hi everyone and welcome to Community Journal. Thank you very much for joining us. We always appreciate you tuning us in. and uh, That we do. Well, that we do. And here we are in the, really in the middle of the summer right now. Yes, we are. The humidity is back. But... Oh, is it ever. The typical <laughs> Cape Cod humidity. Yes. You know, that's one. <laughs> we don't really think about it until our kids come from California and especially our in-law children um, are not used to it because they're from California. And uh, they just have a hard time getting used to the humidity. But. Yeah, I know. They say, oh, it's 105 degrees, but it's nice dry heat. Yes. Well, I don't care. <laughs> 105 degrees, you can keep it. <laughs> That's what they're having out there now. Yeah, they yeah. are. They, yeah. they really are. Yeah. But, uh, and uh, today, at least we're getting some beneficial rain today, yes. which we've not had much of. Up until uh, today, we've only had a quarter of an inch of rain uh, for July here on, in Harwich, at least our part of Harwich, mm -hmm. and uh, right now we've gotten more than that today than we have had all of the month, so um, that's a good thing. Ah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. we didn't have much, I know. No, we didn't, mm -hmm. and uh, we really needed it. And, you know, I have to do a shout-out today because, yes, you, do. you know, I know. <laughs> I, every week I complain about uh, uh, folks on that bike trail not stopping, dismounting, and walking across. Well, I have to say, this past couple of weeks we have noticed people stopping, take, dismounting, and walking across those uh, in dangerous intersections, and we really appreciate that. And I'll tell you why. I came across one the other day. Uh, this was a family, and this huge pickup truck came <gasps> roaring through the intersection, oh and um, this family had stopped, dismounted, and walked across. Had they not done that, there would have been a serious accident there. So please continue your good work out there. We yes. really appreciate that. Yes. It puts a smile on his face. It so does. Please, please continue <laughs> to do that. Very good. Well, our first spot today, uh, Michael is going to bring us up to date at the Harwich Conservation Trust. There's a lot going on there. Dinah sat down with him. So let's take a look and see what's going on with the Harwich Conservation Trust. Locke and Tyler Maycath of the Harwich Conservation Trust and uh, they have a number of things to tell us about walks and mm -hmm. uh, evenings and so forth yeah. so nice. um, thanks for having us Dinah yeah it's Thank great you. to have you here again mm. so um, Michael do you want to start with telling us a little bit about the walks that you have planned coming up sure thanks uh, and folks can learn uh, all about the, these uh, different walks and events at our website, harwichconservationtrust.org. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got th this really interesting set of walks uh, centered around the full moon of each of the mm -hmm. summer months, June, July, and August. Mm -hmm. uh, the next one coming up is um, Monday, uh, July 30th. Yes, there's a full moon coming up. That's right. In just a couple right. of days, you right? You see a photo there. That's actually, that full moon photo is taken by one of our volunteers. All of these photos wow. taken by our volunteers, amazing. That could be on the cover of National Geographic, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, that's by Gus Romano. Thank you, Gus. Um, so these walks take place around the time of the full moon in the evening, uh, mm -hmm. 6 to 8 p.m. They are in the Cape Cod National Seashore, so we uh, acquired a special permit um, to have this walk uh, in the seashore all the way up north in East Ham. Uh, mm. We're partnering with our sister land trust, uh, the East Ham Conservation Foundation, which is celebrating their 40th anniversary year, HCT in 2018, celebrating our 30th anniversary year. Todd Kelly, 12th generation Cape Cotter, who hails from Chatham, and uh, um, Marcus Hendricks, a native Wampanoag and Nipmuc heritage, uh, are co-leading this walk. And it focuses on, the, there's Marcus, a nice photo of Marcus. It's taken by uh, Rick Moriarty. Um, and uh, Marcus and Todd talk about the life ways of mm -hmm. the first people, the Native Americans that uh, first came uh, to this uh, part of the East Coast and settled on, the, on this peninsula, uh, and what their activities were like at that time of day. Mm -hmm. As mm -hmm. day transitions to twilight, to uh, nighttime, and uh, it's a nice sunset oh. photo by Gus Romano. That is Isn't that beautiful? Amazing. So it's a, it's, a, it's a fascinating time of day because of that, um, that daylight to nighttime transition. Todd and Marcus not only will be talking about um, uh, some of the uh, first peoples, the Native Americans, um, 
uh, rituals and, and activities at that time of the day into night, uh, but also talking about some of the natural history of the area. You can see this beautiful photo of the uh, Nauset Marsh estuary in the distance while walking part of the bike path that extends from the Salt Ponds Visitor Center to Coast Guard a Beach on the Atlantic. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where the uh, walk will um, uh, finally end at Coast Guard Beach and then they'll make a return trip uh, back to the starting point. They'll also talk about some of the wildlife behavior uh, mm -hmm. during that uh, mm -hmm. diurnal or daytime uh, mm -hmm. through the twilight or crepuscular activity by wildlife into the nocturnal time. So uh, $20 per person, again, harwichconservationtrust.org. It's a, it's a fun mm. walk. Such a rich part of our history that we're, mm. so many people are not familiar with. I mean, we walk on that, um, on that at the visitor center there mm -hmm. and walk up to Coast Guard all the time. Yes. But to know more about the history and uh, Native peoples and what they did years and years ago is just so, it, it is enriching. It is. For everyone's experience at the Cape. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. It's a great opportunity. That's terrific. Mm. Great. And then I know you have the uh, Henry Beston walks as well. That, Is that right? That's uh, new for us this year, uh, partnering um, again with East Ham Conservation Foundation and local author and historian uh, Don Wilding. Mm -hmm. uh, and he uh, will lead a walk on Saturday, August 11th, starting at 10 a.m., also in the National Seashore. When folks register for these walks via our website, uh, then you'll receive a confirmation email with driving directions to the walk starting point. There's Don um, uh, shown there, um, uh, introducing the, the start of the walk to folks. It's about a two hour walk uh, and makes its way uh, past the, the salt pond embayment there that uh, folks often see. One of those picture uh, perfect postcard mm -hmm. views from Route 6 as they're traveling um, through East Ham. And folks have been really enjoying this walk that focuses on the history of Henry Beston who wrote the book The Outermost House. Henry Beston was an ambulance driver uh, among uh, other adventures and mm -hmm. life experiences in World War I, came to the Cape um, and as sort of a place of sanctuary, uh, retreated to the outermost house to uh, experience what it was like living on the outer beach uh, throughout um, the four seasons over a 12-month period. So Henry Beston um, wrote about his experience out there in the outermost house, and Don Wilding uh, wrote about Henry Beston and the outermost house, a <laughs> book about um, Henry Beston and the history of, of his connection to uh, East Ham and Coast Guard Beach and the Outermost House, which washed away in the blizzard of 78, 40 years ago, uh, this past February. Uh, but um, join the walk to learn all about it uh, from Don Wilding. These photos um, uh, taken, taken by uh, Vince DeWitt, uh, uh, one of our, our fantastic volunteer photographers, and um, Frank. Yeah, you do um, have some amazing Meglia. photography here. Yes, yes. yes. Um, beautiful views Exquisite. out here. It is, yeah. So that's another great walk. Again, Saturday, August 11th. That one's at 10 a.m. Okay, mm. great, good. Yeah. So, uh, Tyler, you want to talk a little bit about the land stewardship program, and you have some exciting things coming up, too. And we got another walk, I think. We do, coming yes. Up. Yeah. Um, we, it's uh, something new for us. We have a free sky watching event at uh, Red River Beach. It's going to be uh, the night of Sunday, August 12th. Um, we have a volunteer amateur astronomer. Mm -hmm. He'll be there with his telescope. His name is Michael Payne. He's a local. And he's going to share the night sky with us. We're going to be able to see uh, Venus and Jupiter and Perseus mm -hmm. and Sagittarius. He's going to give us some tips for observing the night sky. It also coincides with the beginning of the Perseid meteor shower. Isn't that great? Uh, yes. Which yeah. is August 12th and 13th Fabulous. and a new moon. So the, uh -huh. the uh, sky viewing conditions should be perfect um, if it's clear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have a cloud date. We do. Okay. We do have an inclement weather <laughs> cloud date, which is the following evening, uh, Monday, August 13th. Mm -hmm. Um, so the Perseid meteor shower is the annual August meteor shower. 
tends to peak later in the night, but hopefully um, folks will see some meteors uh, when the Earth travels through the trail of the comet Swift Tuttle. So uh -huh. um, this year it's supposed to be quite spectacular. So uh, fingers crossed on that. That's really that exciting. Yeah, yeah, really exciting. Mm. And what time exactly does that begin and how do people register for it? Uh, so it's free and it's uh, at 8.30 at night. Okay. Folks will gather. 8 so just show up <coughs> at well, Red River. Got to register because space is limited. Oh, okay. That's yeah. right. Uh, we have to limit it to about tw 20 people or so. Oh, okay. Um, so everyone okay. has an opportunity to observe with Michael. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and we need to get our so, bid in then early. Um, mm -hmm. There'll be details on the web. Uh, folks can register by emailing events at harwichconservationtrust.org. Okay. okay. Good to know. Mm. It's exciting. Right down the street from me. So yes, right, right. It's great. Okay. Good. Yeah. Um, so as far as land stewardship is concerned, we have um, a volunteer trail work event uh, next Tuesday. It's going to be at 9 a.m. Um, at the Bell's Neck Conservation Area. Um, and there will be details um, sent out to folks on our volunteer list um, if you want to drop in, however. Uh, we will be meeting on Bell's Neck Road, um, off Great Western Road, so that side of the property. And we're going to be doing trail work from 9 to about 11 a.m. to clear some of the trails there. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. There's an example of some Such as these, That's these great. folks from AmeriCorps. Uh, we mm -hmm. did some, mm -hmm. this is at the uh, Muddy Creek Headwaters property, mm -hmm. which we've been preparing to open to the public. Mm -hmm. And so hopefully that will happen soon as well. And should people... People should get in touch with you if they want to come and help or just show yes, up. Yes, mm. they can uh, They can email me at tyler at harwichconservationtrust.org. Okay. okay. Mm. All right. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. I also wanted to share some um, data about our birds and our nest box mm -hmm. monitoring program. Mm -hmm. We have a group of intrepid birders. <laughs> uh, they're really wonderful. And... Um, most birders seem to be intrepid, <laughs> actually, in my yeah. experience. Right. There's a photo of a tree swallow feeding a, a nestling. Uh, so we have a lot of nest boxes that we monitor mm -hmm. here um, at Thompson's Field, uh, the Robert F. Smith Coldbrook Preserve, and at the Teixeira Conservation Area. Mm -hmm. We have 45 nest boxes at Coldbrook alone. Um, so it's wow. quite a task for them wow. to monitor. It takes several hours. Each every week mm. um, and we have nesting tree swallows, eastern bluebirds, mm. black capped chickadees, lots of house wrens um, and now things are kind of winding down so I just mm. wanted to share mm -hmm. a little bit of data that is a couple weeks old but mm -hmm. just to give folks an idea of how many birds we're talking about um, the group has monitored 238 nestlings wow. of those um, 86 have fledged, so that's mm -hmm. uh, pretty good nest success for mm -hmm. songbirds, mm -hmm. actually. Um, and the house wrens continue to nest. Um, only about 15 or so nest boxes are still being used at Coldbrook. Mm -hmm. um, and Thompson's Field does have a few more um, in use. Um, and some of the bluebirds are actually re-nesting now. They're producing mm. their second clutch of eggs um, because they're a resident species. They're able to nest several times clutch. throughout the breeding season. Is that a technical term meaning uh, a, a brood? A clutch of eggs, yes. Yes, yeah. yeah. I see. If they have a batch of eggs. Uh -huh. yes. Yes. Uh, I haven't ever, ever heard that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 Pretty amazing. That's one season. That's one nesting season. Yeah. And these volunteers yeah. have been working on and this for several years. And speaking of data, how many volunteers did you have mm. gathering all of that data? How many people are working on that? Um, it's a group of about eight birders. And we're always wow. looking for yeah. more folks. Um, they really do a lot be. of work. Yes. Yeah. 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 They, they do a really great job of documenting everything yes. out there for mm -hmm. us mm -hmm. in the town. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's terrific. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Wonderful. Good. Um, so I think uh, you have covered everything that I heard about. Do you yeah. have anything else that you'd like to just mention? To, just to mention the Cornelius Pond Woodlands project oh, yes. again. We, we, okay. we know we've had right. uh, that project featured on That's your right. show um, yep. uh, in, in, uh, over the past couple episodes. 
Uh, but we just want to keep it front and center uh, for folks uh, since uh, there's a beautiful photo um, taken by Gus Romano of the shoreline. Uh, so as a summary, um, 15 acres uh, with more than a thousand feet of shoreline on Cornelius Pond. So almost the entire westerly shore of this coastal plain pond. Uh, coastal plain ponds uh, named uh, for the coastal plain that was created by the receding glacier about 18,000 years ago. So the melting ice uh, receding uh, northward, carrying that melting ice, that meltwater, carrying silt and other materials uh, from the glacier, uh, draining off into uh, this uh, wider plain that eventually became the Cape as uh, mm. seas, sea level rose. And then there were huge chunks of ice that fell off that glacier and sat in the landscape, uh, melted, created these great big depressions Groundwater rising filled those depressions. Those are our ponds of today, our kettle hole ponds, kettle ponds. Mm -hmm. of which this is one. There's a meadow also uh, present on the property, wonderful habitat diversity mm -hmm. with this collection of meadow habitat, forest habitat, mm -hmm. wetlands, and then of course that more than 1,000 feet of, of pond shoreline. Mm -hmm. uh, always a different view, right? This is a very still um, view of the pond with the uh, shoreline reflected on the surface. Uh, we have about $150,000 left to raise by the end of the year in this total $850,000 uh, project. Um, still a lot to raise. We hope uh, folks can rally around this project, mm -hmm. help us preserve uh, both the habitat diversity for um, a variety of wildlife species, uh, protect the wa water quality by preserving the, the land. Um, there's a downy woodpecker, mm -hmm. uh, just an example of the many uh, mm. different birds that use this site for foraging, nesting, mm -hmm. sheltering. Mm -hmm. Once we're fortunate enough to preserve it, uh, we will open a future walking trail, we hope, uh, in 2019. So um, uh, stay tuned, uh, yes. and um, we hope that we can be successful with widespread community support in saving this land. Right. Mm. So we will stay tuned, and yeah. people will think about how important it is. Yes. Um, are you planning any walks over there to reacquaint people with the beauty of the place, or do you have any thoughts about? Right now, it's um, there is not a walking trail no on way site. To really go right. There and, so and view it, except one, through the pictures, which are spectacular. Right, and we do have um, uh, some of those photos on our website, harwardconservationtrust.org. Okay. Okay. So at the moment, a virtual visit. There's yep. also a great okay. aerial uh, video. Oh. Um, but then on um, the website, yes, excellent. Yes, so. okay, so people should check that out. Yes, okay, well, lots going on as always, preserving the beauty of Harwich. Mm. And we're so excited about all your work, it's really great. Thank Thanks you so Dana. much for coming. Thanks, in. Dana. Yeah, mm. much appreciated. Mm. Well, we appreciate Michael and Tyler. <laughs> Excuse me, sitting down with Diner and uh, bringing us up to date. Um, yes. They always do such great work, and I always comment on the fantastic photographs. Um, you just, do, and they are beautiful. Yeah, they are breathtaking. They really are. Mm. I mean, there's so many, there's so many places in Howard that you can take some beautiful pictures, and um, you're right. We they, take it for granted because it's here. And yeah, I know. This is where we live, but yeah, no, thanks, uh, thanks, thanks to the three of them for doing such a nice job on that. That was good. Uh, just a reminder, everyone, that uh, ongoing uh, every Thursday is the Harwich uh, Farmer's Market. This is a great take, if you haven't done it, uh, a great opportunity to get some nice fresh, fresh vegetables. I can't talk today. Fresh vegetables. You try it, Jack. <laughs> You'll get it out. <laughs> um, from 3 to 6 every Thursday, right at the Brooks Academy Museum. Uh, it's right there on the little field in front of the museum. Uh, fresh, uh, local uh, farm vegetables there and uh, flowers and herbs, um, you know, baked goods, fruits and veggies. There's live music. They usually have uh, uh, like a little quartet or a trio playing there. It's really very, very nice. This is community agriculture at its best, and that's a quote right from the Cape Cod Times. And uh, there's more info if you need it at harwichfarmersmarket.org. And that's every Thursday from 3 to 6 p.m. right there in front of Brooks Academy Museum. So um, get there every Thursday, 3 to 6.
Very good. Nice yeah. reminder. Yeah, they uh, they do a nice job over there and a great opportunity to get some great food. Yes. And uh, also another reminder that uh, the community yard sale is just around the corner now. This is a great opportunity to clean out your closets and uh, stuff that you might think isn't very valuable might be a treasure for somebody else. You never know. This is Saturday, August 4th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, it's right here at the community center and um, community groups, clubs, organizations, and the public all offering items for sale. Um, <laughs> spaces are available for only $20, and that's a great deal. Uh, for $20, you get a space, and uh, uh, it's going to, located rack, actually at Brooks Park, but if it rains, it comes here over to the community center. So uh, uh, rain or shine, yard sale on August 4th at Brooks Park, um, if it does rain, it'll be in the community center gym. So if you need more information, you can call 508-430-7568 for details. That's 508-430-7568, Saturday, August 4th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. And if you want to buy a table to display your wares, it's only 20 bucks. Yeah, so that's a great deal. Yes. 20 bucks. Hey, you go. can't go wrong. What do you got? Lots of stuff. Oh, lots of stuff. Yes. Okay. Get your pen and paper ready. Oh, boy. Speaking of the first week or two in August, I have a couple of announcements you might be interested in. The Town of Harwich is giving a public meeting notice for the annual non-resident taxpayers meeting on August 6th. And this is a really important meeting to attend if you are a non-resident taxpayer. We were for years. Yeah, and I remember us going there and learning so much about what goes on in town. Yes, yeah, and bringing questions about things that, you know would would uh, apply to to non-resident taxpayers right. such as the beaches and so forth yeah more so than maybe people who are resident taxpayers right anyway the Harwich Board of Selectmen will hold the annual non-resident taxpayers meeting on Monday August 6 no earlier than 6 30 p.m. so don't get there before 6 30 p.m. apparently during their regular meeting in the John B Griffin meeting room located at 732 732 Main Street in Harwich all Harwich non-resident taxpayers are encouraged to attend this informational meeting, which will provide an overview of town government and provide non-resident taxpayers an opportunity to raise and discuss issues and concerns. Topics will include, but it's not limited to, and I'll just give you a few as an example. Fire Station 2 um, by Norm Clark. Report from the Harbor Master John Rendon about the Sacquatucket Harbor Project. Report from the Recreation Director Eric Beebe about the beaches and report from the DPW Director, Lincoln Hooper, about Beaches and Trash, Council on Aging, Jimmy Wilson, about their programs, and our very own Jamie Goodwin will be presenting Channel 18 YouTube Access. And there's other topics as well, plus the questions you might bring to the meeting to ask. So if you are a non-resident taxpayer and you're free on August 6th, it's a very good meeting to attend. You know, and I might add, you know, the last <coughs> one that you mentioned there, <clears throat> for those of you that aren't here during the winter and uh, want to watch this show and you're not in Harwich, Jamie is going to explain how you can do it. And it's very, very easy. So you can see this show even though you're not here, no matter where you are you'll still be able to see it, so um, that'll if be explained. If you want to. If you want to. You may not want to. But, <laughs> but it's an option. It's an option, right. There you go. <laughs> and the Bayberry Quilt Guild is presenting their Seasons of Quilting 37th Annual Quilt Show. I can't believe it's been here 37 years I can't years either. Now. That's incredible. And that also is August 2nd through the 4th, so it's again the first week in August. And it's at a new location, so please pay attention. It's at the Barnstable High School 744 West Main Street in Hyannis. Uh, there will be a $10 show pass charge Thursday and Friday. The show will be from 9.30 to 4, and on Saturday it will be 9.30 to 3. There will be an exhibit of over 300 quilts, wow. a merchant's mall, quilt appraisals, quilt raffle to benefit local scholarships, a handcraft boutique, and daily lectures and demonstrations. So if you are a quilter or you appreciate the work that quilters do, this is the show for you. I just can't imagine 300 quilts, how many hours of work that... Well, we went to this a long time yes, ago with did. friends of ours when it was at the Cape Cod Tech. Yeah. Yeah, and it was, it was just mind-blowing, yeah. the work it's that goes into The work these. that goes... And they are gorgeous. Yes. They really are. So, so it's a real it's a good take. Such hand work. Yeah, wonderful. If you can get there, do so, because it's well worth the take. It really is. It is. And uh, 
Ann Carpenter, who is the Youth Services Director over at the Brooks Free Library, is going to bring us up to date now what's going on over there. Always something great during the summer and all year. But let's, uh, let's see what Ann Carpenter has to tell us now uh, at the Brooks Free Library. Let's take a look. Hello, I'm Ann Carpenter, the Youth Services Librarian at the Brooks Free Library, here to talk about some of the fun programs we have going on for children this week. Starting on July 26th, Thursday at 2.30, we're going to have Rainforest Reptiles coming into the library. This is a free program that does not require any registration, as are all of our programs this week. Um, we will start handing out tickets at 2 o'clock um, on a first-come, first-served basis. And if you have a hard time parking, you can park across the street at Brooks Park or the Town Hall. Um, Rainforest Reptiles is a super fun program. We've had them in the past. They bring in lots of live reptile animals, including, at least in the past anyway, a six-foot-long boa constrictor, which is always a, one of the highlights of the event. Um, and again, that is July 26 at 2.30, and that is open for all ages. Then on Friday, we have two programs. In the morning, we have our regular 10.30 story time, which is reading books and singing songs and is great for young children. And then in the afternoon, we're going to have our Friday craft. This week's theme is sock animals. We did this last year, and it was amazing. Um, you take the socks and you stuff them, and the variety of different kind of animals that we had last year was just mind-blowing. It was really just a super fun project. And that is going to be at 2.30 on Friday, July 27th. Our next program next week is on Monday, July 30th, is our teen craft for those who are 13 and up. And this year we're going to be doing jelly printing. Um, so if you haven't done it before, um, you get sort of a gelatin and you use that to print with. It's great because you get some really interesting textures and you can make some, very, some layered prints. Um, it's a really sophisticated craft that makes some very um, interesting final prints. So if you know anyone who's interested in art, they absolutely would love to come and do that. Um, and again, that's for teens on Monday, July 30th at 2.30. Then on Tuesday is another double program day. In the morning, we have Mother Goose on the Loose for young children, babies, toddlers, preschoolers, although all ages are welcome. It's an all singing, all dancing, playing with scarves, playing with noisemakers, um, great time for little kids. And then in the afternoon, we're at 2.30, we're going to have a reptile science program. The Museum of Science from Boston has traveling shows, so they bring down some um, live animals and explain all about the different habitats and educational opportunities with reptiles. Um, then on Wednesday, August 1st, we're going to be doing a Build It Challenge. We'll give students a variety of different materials, and they need to see if they can build a zip line that will carry a ping pong ball from one side part of the room to a different part of the room. Um, we, there will be several different levels of challenge, so that way everyone will be successful, but everyone will also be genuinely challenged at the same time. Um, as always, we are still running our summer reading program. To sign up for the summer reading program, you can come into the library or visit our website at brooksfreelibrary.org. The way the summer reading program works is every time a student reads or is read to for two and a half hours, which works out to about 15 minutes a day for a week, you get a free book and a small prize as well. Um, one of our popular prizes is buttons and magnets because we have our own button maker, and that is a lot of fun to come in and draw your own little picture and put it on a button. Um, as always, if you want more information about our programs, you can call us at 508-430-7562, extension 2 for the Youth Services Department, or visit our website at brooksfreelibrary.org for a full listing of all of our events this summer. Thank you. Well, as always, there's so much <laughs> wonderful stuff going on at that library. I and, know. Uh, and uh, Ann, thank you for bringing us up to date. We do appreciate that. Here is a great opportunity um, for nonprofits to uh, take advantage of getting involved in a flea market, um, a chance to, um, you know, sell some things at a flea market at no cost, actually. This is uh, being sponsored by Buoys and Burlap. The Buoys and Burlap market uh, is having a flea market on September 1st from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. and it's going to be located at the uh, in the front field of the Harwich Cultural Center and um, this is a if you're a nonprofit and uh, you can participate in this flea market free 
And um, you know, it's a great opportunity to be able to raise some money for your organization. Uh, you can take part in this just by getting in touch with Buies and Burlap, Burlap at gmail.com. So that's Buies and Burlap at gmail.com for more details. Uh, the flea market is going to be September 1st from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. That's a Saturday. And, um, you know, they are looking for at least four more nonprofits to get involved with this. So uh, here's an opportunity if you're not already involved and you are a nonprofit, here's an opportunity to maybe raise some money for your organization. So uh, I don't see a phone number here, but you can email them at that email address. Very good. So, nice uh, opportunity. Yeah, that is a good yeah. opportunity. And uh, uh, kudos to uh, Bowie's and Burlap. That's yes. uh, nice of them to do that. Yes. Okay. What do you have, Eileen? Well. This is big. This is big. Yes. It is a big poster, and there's lots of information. So, again, get your pen and paper ready if you think you might be interested. Friends of the South Harwich Meeting House Incorporated proudly present their open house days at the South Harwich Meeting House. The first day will be Friday, August 3rd at 7 p.m. The Keneally School of Irish Dance Champions will dance the Old Country Family Dance, traditional set dances of Ireland and Scotland, which I know a bit about. Uh, just with a bit. Rose Clan <laughs> yeah, just a bit. With Rose Clancy, Max Cohen, and special caller John Alden. Come dance with them and have some tasty snacks, cold drinks, and instruction, which is always important. Destructions are always oh, they, important. Uh, very yes, our important. granddaughter calls them destructions. Destructions, yes. yes. <laughs> anyway, the admission is $10 on Friday, and children will be free. Now, on Saturday, August 4th, at 7.30 p.m., the Clancy Tradition Concert will take place with traditional Irish musicians, instruments, and song, with special guests John Alden, Sarah Macchio, and Thomas Macchio. I hope I'm saying your last name right. And at 10 a.m. that same day, Saturday, August 4th, there will be meeting house and prominent resident tours. And the Clancy Tradition will be $20 on Saturday. On Sunday, August 5th, at 10 a.m., the meeting house tours and prominent resident tours will again take place. At 11.30 a.m., there will be a meeting house brunch. And that's just a donation suggested for the Meeting House Brunch. Mm -hmm. So that sounds like a nice cake, too. Yeah. A South Harwich Meeting House Benefit Concert. And the dance admission is $10 for adults and children are free. And the concert, concert tickets, as I said, are $20 at the door or reservations. And you can call 508-364-5223 if you're interested. Wow, that's quite a weekend. Yes, it is. Yeah, that's really Lots of Irish things lots going on, yes, Jack. <laughs> that's for sure. My goodness. And you are familiar with uh, most of that. That's that I <laughs> am. That I am. No, I no, wish I kept my fish or medals that I that's had That's right. You over did. The yeah, years, you yeah. were quite a dancer. In yeah. The, in, few, back in the day. Back in the day, yes. <laughs> Long time ago. Not now. No. <laughs> we don't do it Well, now. I can still dance, but you not can. Irish. You can. Yes, you can. You do quite well. Yes, I do. And um, <laughs> you, you do, you do do very Thank well. You. Um, there's an ongoing program that's going on all summer long. Uh, a lot of the dates have already passed, but Cranfest in the Courtyard has been going on. This is Thursday evenings at the Harwich Cultural Center. There's been country, bluegrass, Celtic, folk, world-class music in a small town setting. And uh, there are still some dates left. August 2nd is coming up, August 9th, August 16th, August 23rd. Uh, tickets are available for $15 per person, and, um, you know, there was season tickets available for seven shows for $75. Most of the shows, unfortunately, now have passed, but rain or shine, these shows are located indoors in the auditorium if it does rain. Uh, gates open at 545. The music starts at 630, and you can bring a chair or a blanket to sit on. Picnics are welcome. This is a great uh, opportunity. There's wine and Devil's Purse beer and softer drinks are for sale. This is going on right at the, um, the Cultural Center, the former middle school at 204 Sisson Road in uh, Howard Center. And this is called Cranfest in the Courtyard. And it's every Thursday evening for several Thursdays. There's a few more left. So if you haven't been there, don't miss it. Um, and uh, Ed McManus, is, um, this is all to help out uh, the Cranberry Art the Cranberry Festival, and we're going to get an update now of, of the Cranberry Festival, oh, which good. is coming up. Ed McManus uh, sat down to give us an update with Dinah 
And uh, now we will bring you up to date as to what's going to happen at Cranberry Festival this year with Ed McManus and Dinah. Let's take a look. Very good. Two cameras. Hello. I'm here with Ed McManus, who is the president of the Harwich Cranberry Festival. And we're going to hear about all the wonderful things that are leading up to the festival and uh, the festival itself. Is that right, Ed? That's right. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Well, it was first off, I want to thank you all here at Channel 18 for having me here and doing this, helping us uh, publicize all the oh. events well, that we do. Well, it's such a wonderful thing. You know, we're so uh, excited about it. A lot of the success depends on getting the word out, and I want to thank you very okay. much. You're um, as you know, it's uh, the Harwich Cranberry Festival is sort of uh, built around the event that we have in the middle of September, but they, all summer long we've uh, added events to help with sort of the excitement and activity that happens here in Harwich um, with our tourists and visitors from around the world. Um, we last uh, uh, the weekend after the 4th of July, we had a successful craft fair um, in Brooks Park, and we'll be having our second one in August, um, the weekend of the 11th and 12th. Um, it's a Saturday, Sunday. We have, uh, we had, uh, I think, uh, 85 vendors at our July fair, and we're pushing over wow. probably 95 at the August fair now. Um, That's a huge turnout. Yeah, That's going to that be a is. wonderful so, array of things. And uh, the Dennis Public Market uh, food truck will be there mm. to uh, provide refreshments. It's quite an operation. Mm -hmm. um, the weekend before, on the 4th, uh, we host, along with the community center, uh, the community flea market, um, the yard sale at Brooks Park from 9 to 1 on Saturday, and it's a chance for uh, organizations in town, organizations who hear, who have their meetings here and activities mm -hmm. at the community center, and, and, and individuals in town to sort of dig out their attics and <laughs> yes, right. bring stuff and make a little money for their or personally or, or for their okay. organization, Great. and that's quite good. Is there a, a rain date for that, or how do you operate um, that? There really has never been a rain date for okay. it. Um, and we've been fairly lucky, so okay. we'll just yes, well, go with that. It never, rain, never rains on the cape. That's right. right? <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, and then this year, to help uh, bring some activity into the Harwich Cultural Center, the old middle school, um, we've uh, set up a concert series all summer long in the courtyard. And there is a rain... Uh, Provisions for that because if it rains, we can move right into the auditorium. Just go inside. Into, yeah. into the auditorium, but it's a, a, a series of uh, singer-songwriters, uh, performers that are in more of the roots, folk, bluegrass, Celtic tradition. Mm -hmm. um, we had our first one last uh, uh, last Thursday mm -hmm. um, with David Manlet, who is a longtime uh, folk singer from the era, early era of Pete Seeger and Arlo Guthrie. Um, a great show. Um, tomorrow night, uh, on uh, the, the 19th, uh, we're having Heather Maloney, a young woman from uh, Virginia, mm -hmm. um, who is an absolutely will write some wonderful songs. Uh, she'll great. be uh, performing. And then uh, the following week, we have uh, Rani Harbo and Daisy Mayhem, and they're they do everything from swing to bluegrass to folk music. They're they're mm -hmm. incredible performers. Okay, and that's in the courtyard. In the at courtyard. The cultural center. At this and what time does it begin? Um, the all the concerts begin. Uh, the gates open at five forty-five, and the, the okay. music starts at six thirty. Okay. Um, you're, uh, it's in the courtyard on the grass, so it's suggested bring a blanket or a chair. Mm -hmm. um, people are encouraged if they want to bring a picnic to eat. Great. Um, we do serve uh, uh, beer. We are serving beer and wine, oh. um, uh, featuring our local uh, brewer here, Devil's Purse, which is actually just over the uh, the, the line in Dennis. Yes. But mm -hmm. uh, Matt Belson, who's their br uh, co-owner and head brewmaster, just lives three houses down on Oak Street from the community center. So we consider it yes, <laughs> the home uh, the home brew, so Absolutely. to speak. Um, They've been wonderful to work with. 
Um, and uh, um, the and then in uh, and so people should not bring their own. No, 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 uh, because yeah. we we we've set the ticket price for those uh, right. concerts at fifteen dollars, which mm -hmm. is very low, you know. And, and the liquor is licensed by yeah, the yeah, yeah. Okay. And so, uh, you know, we offset the cost by making a little bit on on the refreshments. Well, it sounds uh, like a lovely yeah. time. Yeah. Anyway, and then in August we uh, the, um, we have uh, on the second Greg Greenway who used to live here in town. He's uh, toured widely around the country mm -hmm. and the world over the last uh, twenty years as a performer. Uh, August 9th, Zoe Mulford, uh, who's a wonderful writer. One of her recent songs was featured on Joan Baez's last album. Oh, really? Um, um, uh, August 16th, Harvey Reed and his wife Joyce Anderson, who are just uh, wonderful instrumentalists and, and, and singers. And then on August 23rd, uh, we're having uh, Runa, which is a band that uh, came and was at the uh, Cultural Center in March and to uh, a sellout crowd and just a wonderful Celtic, traditional Celtic man. Mm. Um, and uh, so we're looking forward to that. Anyway, that's that's okay. the sort of summer's activity. And that's every Thursday. Every Thursday. Okay. And then as we get into uh, September, uh, um, the Saturday after Labor Day, the 8th, will be Beach Day down at yes. uh, Red River yeah. Beach. Mm -hmm. um, uh, beach activ activities, fun and games and for the kids. And uh, touch a truck mm -hmm. activities. Um, the food truck and uh, a whole variety of things um, that'll happen uh, that day. And then the following weekend, the 15th and 16th, is the annual uh, festival weekend, mm -hmm. which will be here again back behind the uh, uh, community center. Uh, we, did, we moved up here last year, and uh, e we think everything about it worked well. It was um, fabulous. Yes. It was absolutely well, thank beautiful. You. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I loved it so yeah. much and met so many people there mm -hmm. and people from all over as well as local. Yeah. It was really a wonderful, wonderful yeah. time and the bands were amazing. Well, thank you. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, that's, uh, that's a, that part of it we owe to uh, our, our music director, Bob Weiser, who uh -huh. just has a lot of contact I see. in yeah. the music world to bring in folks. Yeah. Um, the, our craft shows, is, putting those together, yeah. is our, our craft show director, Joanne Clancy. She yeah. scours That was such the, a broad shows, array of things. It was terrific. I loved it. The shows up and down Cape Cod, yeah. finding the best to, oh, to, yeah. to, yeah. to ask to come. Um, and then we're getting, we'll, we'll, we have a nice uh, collection of food trucks uh, mm -hmm, there, um, mm -hmm. uh, some traditional and some new ones. Uh, so we're looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. um, but everything about it, the, from the parking and traffic uh, yeah. circulation, works so much better than mm -hmm. being down at Brooks location. Park, yeah. it, which would just tied up everything. Right. right. Um, and uh, and then also uh, this year we're we're going to be putting. Uh, in addition to the Saturday music, uh, which will again feature Donna the Buffalo, and this year uh, right. another band we're getting in is Los Tex Maniacs, oh. a, a Grammy Award-winning <laughs> band. Really? Yeah. Great. Yeah. Um, they, uh, we've gotten them, and Bob's working on a few others for Saturday, but then we're also going to be putting on a, um, a, a program on Sunday, mm -hmm. um, uh, probably a, about three hours worth of music from noon to say th I think three mm -hmm. and uh, we're looking uh, for, for uh, talent from the Cape more in the country western ah, venue uh -huh, vein, uh -huh. something a little bit of entertainment Terrific. Uh, for on Sunday people last year uh, a lot of folks showed up on Sunday hoping to hear some music and we didn't we I hadn't see. planned right. on it and so uh, you learn so something yeah, new every year yeah, right? we did yep, we did that's so great. it worked well um, so we're looking forward to it and then the Chamber is going to be hol holding on Saturday a business expo for local businesses mm -hmm. to come, and they'll be located in the gymnasium this year. Okay. So people can okay. can uh, go inside uh, and do that. Do it come inside, outside, come and outside, and, and and go right into the festival, and then at eight, a little after eight, um, they'll again be hosting a fireworks show, and you can view that mm. from either mm -hmm. here at the community center. Right. And, and, okay. and buy a beer and, and sit and have a beer mm -hmm. while watching it. Or mm -hmm. if you want to cross the street uh, and watch it from the uh, fields over from at the high school, at the high school okay. you can do that. But 
you, know, you can't take any of the Bay Bridge off, off the premise. I see, um, okay. At the uh, community center, nor can you actually, because it's a school, take mm -hmm. any alcoholic beverage Okay, onto that's it. good to know. Unfortunately, we had way too many empties left on the front oh. field at the, uh, <laughs> at the uh, right. high school uh, yesterday, uh, last year. Yeah. And we had actually, you know, from the festival's point mm -hmm. of view, mm -hmm. we had far too many folks bringing in their own I see. beer okay. and wine to the, the show, yeah. which is because we have to get a license, it becomes mm -hmm. a license present and you're not theoretically. Not supposed not to bring supposed your own. To yes. Bring your own. Sure. And that's the way we basically support mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. the activities and keep them as free activities yeah. rather than having to charge yeah. an admission fee or a, or a ticket charge or something yeah. like that, which we really don't want to do. We, well, have, it we is like a, the concept. Yeah. It's a wonderful, yeah. inclusive event. Yeah. It's so nice yeah. to be yeah. able to just come Make and enjoy. It, the parking and, and the admission has all, always been... Amazing. Over, well, over the last eight years, has yeah. always been free, right. and we, like, uh -huh. we hope to keep it that way. Okay. So. Anyway, it's, that's what we have planned. Okay. And um, as is always, you know, we're a volunteer committee. Nobody mm -hmm. uh, gets a salary or pay, but... Uh, because of that, we are always looking for more volunteers. <laughs> okay, uh, all right. We have uh, some of the kids from the high school, the key club, and some of the athletic teams mm -hmm. are helping us out. Mm -hmm. um, and some of the parents with the athletic boosters are, uh, are uh, also helping us out now. Um, uh -huh. But we're looking for um, more folks to volunteer because at the end of the day, yeah. what money we have at the end of the year, we, we put towards supporting children, uh, youth right. activities sure. in the community and scholarships. And this year we gave, I think it was 16 scholarships totaling $22,000 to graduating high school students from either Monomoy or uh -huh. the tech school. So, and that was from the receipts of last year? Yeah, yeah. Very you know, good. You know, and then, you know, donations for help yeah. at the after prom party yeah, and I see. events uh -huh. like that. So it's uh it works it's, wonderfully uh, all around. It works around. This is this will be our forty second year. Wow. So and how long have you been the president of this um, I've, organization? I've, I've uh, the last eight years I've I see. Uh, starting to look seriously to trying to find somebody <laughs> to step up <laughs> to take uh -huh. it over. But uh, But you're doing uh, such a good yeah, job. Yeah. You know yeah. about okay. eight years ago. It almost uh, failed, um, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it, we scrambled to keep it going and sort of regrew it. And it's, yeah. uh, it's, I think, it well, become it looks much, like it's in very good shape. A much, yeah. much, much more of a small town uh, community yes. event than yeah. a big production show that it had. Become. I see. I so, see. I see. Anyway, yeah. There we are. Okay. Well, it sounds like a fabulous <laughs> summer leading up to yep, this amazing yep, event, yep. and uh, we'll look forward to all of it. Okay. And thank well, you so much for thank coming Thank you, in. Diana. Really it's appreciate nice, your time. Nice meeting and, you, and, and all your hard here. work. Yes, welcome to helping out here at Channel 18. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm enjoying it. Okay. Enjoying meeting you. Thanks. Nice. Well, thanks to Ed and Dinah for bringing us up to date. It sounds like it's going to be a great Cranberry Festival, as it always is. Yes, I have the dates on my calendar, on our calendar already, yep. and hopefully we will be able to go, and all of you will be able to go as well. It yeah, sounds like a you, great weekend. It's always a great weekend. Something for and, everybody. Yeah, and it's uh, just a wonderful thing to go to, and uh, lots of fun. Yeah. Folks, that's our show for this week. We really appreciate you joining us. Thank you so much for tuning us in on behalf of all of us here at Channel 18. We appreciate it. And please take advantage of everything we've told you about. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye for now.